Good afternoon, sports fans, and welcome to the Rice State, or what is it, the Irvin J. Nutter Center, excuse me, here at Rice State University. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Noah, Rice State University taking on Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles, starting the game off. Who are our starting five? For Wright State, you've got a bit four that you would expect. You've got Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, Tim Finke, and Grant Basile, the guys who really laid down this lineup last year beside Loudon Love, who, of course, is no longer here. But you've got freshman center A.J. Braun rounding out the lineup. He's somebody that Nagy's put a lot of trust in recently. As we've got the game starting here, Wright State passing it around a little bit. There's a Basile at the top of the key back out to Holden. Wright State did win the tip-off. It's over to Calvin on the right side. Calvin out to Basile on the right. Pass to the inside to Braun. AJ Braun trying to get the layup. That's no good. Rebound going over to number two for Tennessee Tech, Daniel Ramsey. The Golden Eagles doing a really nice job of doubling up on defense when somebody has the ball outside, not letting Wright State get that three point shot that they love. Now, they would passing it out to Junior Clay. Junior Clay working his way to the inside, trying to take a contested shot, and that one goes in. Good defense by Tanner Holden, but. Junior Clay, the leading scorer for this team, averaging about 13 points, getting first on the board for Tennessee Tech. Tim Finke finds a jumper, not gonna go. Not even close, unfortunately, not hitting the rim. Tim Finke slowed down a lot this season compared to last season. Only shooting, what was it, 32% from three? Clo close to 44, 45% last season. He's really struggled to find a shot so far. Hopefully he can find it today. Great defense by Braun. Junior Clay working his way, trying to have a crossover, loses the ball. Calvin playing great defense. Clay keeps the ball. Tanner Holden with the steal. Tanner Holden's got nothing but court in front of him. Tanner Holden with an easy slam. First points for Wright State on the board. Wright State's really struggled on defense so far this season, but you love to see a play like that where Tanner Holden gets a free open run to the basket. That's something that's happened a lot to Wright State this year. Seeing it go the other way is really nice. Deontay Wood over Grant Basile. That field goal is good to make it 4-2. Tennessee Tech up in this one. Two minutes of action so far into this game. Trey Calvin with the ball going up to the right side of the court here. Going up to the top to Basile. Tim Finke on the arc. Thought about it. Braun. Basile. Great passing here by Wright State. Goes back to Holden. Finke on the side. He's going to the inside. Grant Basile. Layup is no good in the paint. Tennessee Tech doing a really nice job of pressuring Wright State here. Even out on the far arc, Wright State's not getting time. If they want to take a three, it's even going to be under contest. Great defense so far by Tennessee Tech. Wright State not doing bad as well. Pass goes out to the outside. Wood goes to the inside. Looking to pass it out. Wide open three. And that one is no good. Rebound shot ends up going in. Or excuse me, not going in. Tanner Holden with the rebound. Holden to Finke on the outside. Pump fake. Back out to Holden. Top of the key. And he's going to be fouled. We might see quite a bit of fouls this game. If Tennessee Tech is not going to allow those wide open shots, we might see a lot of fouls for Wright State, especially if they're driving through the lane like that. Andrew Welch subbing in for number 12, A.J. Braun, here for Wright State. Wellage, a, a freshman who got some playing time last year, and now it's a sophomore, looking a bit more experienced, a bit more, a bit more confident in his step and in the way that he plays. Grant Basile working his way to the inside, and he's going to be fouled on the shot. So now we're going to see him go to the free, free throw line today. Wright State, a team that normally does pretty good on free throws. They shot close to 80% last year. They struggled a little bit against Akron in free throws, and that was part of why Akron was able to take the win. But Wright State, always a team that prides themselves on being able to take some good free throws. Grant Basile on the season so far, about 82% on the line. That first one's no good, though. We know how the commentator's jinx goes. <laughs> and it's always me that does it. <laughs> Well, I said Wright State likes to pride themselves on free throws. Hey, you got that one, though. That one is in. So now it's 4-3, Tennessee Tech up in this one. We're going to see Keyshawn Davidson, one of the guards here for Tennessee Tech, with the ball. Passes to the inside. Going back out to White Jr. White Jr. pulls up. Nothing but net. 6-3, Tennessee Tech. Trey Calvin passes out to Finky, top of the key. Here goes Finky. Trey Calvin to the outside on the right of the arc. Grant Basile working his way to the inside, goes for the layup, and that one's no good. Wright State having zero success in the paint so far today. Having a lot of trouble. Wide open three. And that one's good. good. 
Number 13, Kenny White Jr., back-to-back -back shots. He has five points so far in this one. Wright State against Akron really gave up a lot of wide-open threes, and that was part of why Akron was able to dominate the matchup. It's not good to see that here, especially with another turnover coming, but it's, still, it's stolen back by Calvin. And then he loses it, so it's going to end up going to be Texas Tech ball. It was a great effort to try to go back for it, but then he tipped it right back out. Yeah. They might actually still call it. They're still, still right calling it right state ball. Still right state ball. Great effort from Trey Calvin to win that ball back for the team. Looks like Deontay Wood might have touched it on his way out, but we're going to see Calvin and Basili sub out. So we're going to see number four, Keaton Norris, as well as trying to find the other person who subbed in here. Looks like Wellage is back. Or, excuse me. Um, Braun is back. A.J. Braun is back. Keaton Norris, uh, another freshman, who's putting quite a bit of work for the roster this year. And that inbound is stolen by Tennessee Tech. One on three play here for Tennessee Tech, but they're not able to get a wide open shot. Good defense from Tim Finke. Wright State triple teaming, but not going to be enough. Amadu Silla on the shot. Tennessee up, Tennessee Tech up 11 to three in this one. Goes to the outside to Wellage. Braun at the top of the key. Braun working his way around. Passes back out to Wellage. Working. Wellage to the inside. Gives it to Holden. And it looks like there's going to be a foul on the play by number 14, Madamu Diara. And we're going to have a timeout here. So we're going to take a timeout with them. 11 to 3, Tennessee Tech up in this one. Make sure you keep it locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM. Good afternoon, sports fans, and welcome to the Rice State, or what is it, the Irvin J. Nutter Center, excuse me, here at Rice State University. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Noah, Rice State University taking on Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles, starting the game off. Who are our starting five? For Wright State, you've got a bit four that you would expect. You've got Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, Tim Finke, and Grant Basile, the guys who really laid down this lineup last year beside Loudon Love, who, of course, is no longer here. But you've got freshman center A.J. Braun rounding out the lineup. He's somebody that Nagy's put a lot of trust in recently. As we've got the game starting here, Wright State passing it around a little bit. There's a Basile at the top of the key back out to Holden. Wright State did win the tip-off. It's over to Calvin on the right side. Calvin out to Basile on the right. Pass to the inside to Braun. A.J. Braun trying to get the layup. That's no good. Rebound going over to number two for Tennessee Tech, Daniel Ramsey. The Golden Eagles doing a really nice job of doubling up on defense when somebody has the ball outside, not letting Wright State get that three-point shot that they love. Now, T. Wood passing it out to Junior Clay. Junior Clay working his way to the inside, trying to take a contested shot, and that one goes in. Good defense by Tanner Holden, but... Junior Clay, the leading scorer for this team, averaging about 13 points, getting first on the board for Tennessee Tech. Tim Finke finds a jumper, not going to go. Not even close, unfortunately, not hitting the rim. Tim Finke slowed down a lot this season compared to last season. Only shooting, what was it, 32% from three? Clo close to 44, 45% last season. He's really struggled to find a shot so far. Hopefully he can find it today. Great defense by Braun. Junior Clay working his way, trying to have a crossover, loses the ball. Calvin playing great defense. Clay keeps the ball. Tanner Holden with the steal. Tanner Holden's got nothing but court in front of him. Tanner Holden with an easy slam. First points for Wright State on the board. Wright State's really struggled on defense so far this season, but you love to see a play like that where Tanner Holden gets a free open run to the basket. That's something that's happened a lot to Wright State this year. Seeing it go the other way is really nice. Deontay Wood over Grant Basile. That field goal is good to make it 4-2. Tennessee Tech up in this one. Two minutes of action so far into this game. Trey Calvin with the ball going up to the right side of the court here. Going up to the top to Basile. Tim Finke on the arc. Thought about it. Braun. Basile. Great passing here by Wright State. Goes back to Holden. Finke on the side. He's going to the inside. Grant Basile. Layup is no good in the paint. Tennessee Tech doing a really nice job of pressuring Wright State here. Even out on the far arc, Wright State's not getting time. If they want to take a three, it's even going to be under contest. Great defense so far by Tennessee Tech. Wright State not doing bad as well. Pass goes out to the outside. Wood goes to the inside. Looking to pass it out. Wide open three. And that one is no good. Rebound shot ends up going in. 
or excuse me, not going in. Tanner Holden with the rebound. Holden to Finke on the outside. Pump fake. Back out to Holden. Top of the key. And he's going to be fouled. We might see quite a bit of fouls this game. If Tennessee Tech is not going to allow those wide open shots, we might see a lot of fouls for Wright State, especially if they're driving through the lane like that. Andrew Weld subbing in for number 12, A.J. Braun, here for Wright State. Wellage, a, a freshman who got some playing time last year, now it's a sophomore, looking a bit more experienced, a bit more, a bit more confident in his step and in the way that he plays. Grant Basile working his way to the inside, and he's going to be fouled on the shot. So now we're going to see him go to the free, free throw line today. Wright State, a team that normally does pretty good on free throws. They shot close to 80% last year. They struggled a little bit against Akron in free throws, and that was part of why Akron was able to take the win. But Wright State, always a team that prides themselves on being able to take some good free throws. Grant Basile on the season so far, about 82% on the line. That first one's no good, though. We know how the commentator's jinx goes. You know? <laughs> and it's always me that does it. <laughs> Well, I said Wright State likes to pride themselves on free throws. Hey, you got that one, though. That one is in. So now it's 4-3 Tennessee Tech up in this one. We're going to see Keyshawn Davidson, one of the guards here for Tennessee Tech, with the ball. Passes to the inside. Going back out to White Jr. White Jr. pulls up. Nothing but net. 6-3 Tennessee Tech. Trey Calvin passes out to Finky, top of the key. Here goes Finky. Trey Calvin to the outside on the right of the arc. Grant Basile working his way to the inside, goes for the layup, and that one's no good. Wright State having zero success in the paint so far today. Having a lot of trouble. Wide open three. And that one's good. good. Number 13, Kenny White Jr., back-to-back -back shots. He has five points so far in this one. Wright State against Akron really gave up a lot of wide open threes, and that was part of why Akron was able to dominate the matchup. It's not good to see that here, especially with another turnover coming, but it's, still, it's stolen back by Calvin. And then he loses it, so it's going to end up going to be Texas Tech ball. It was a great effort to try to go back for it, but then he tipped it right back out. Yeah. They might actually still call it. They're still, still right calling it right state ball. Still right state ball. Great effort from Trey Calvin to win that ball back for the team. Looks like Deontay Wood might have touched it on his way out, but we're going to see Calvin and Basili sub out. So we're going to see number four, Keaton Norris, as well as... Trying to find the other person who subbed in here. Looks like Wellage is back. Or, excuse me. Uh, Braun is back. A.J. Braun is back. Keaton Norris, uh, another freshman, who's putting quite a bit of work for the roster this year. And that inbound is stolen by Tennessee Tech. One on three play here for Tennessee Tech, but they're not able to get a wide open shot. Good defense from Tim Finke. Wright State triple teaming, but not going to be enough. Amadou Silla on the shot. Tennessee up. Tennessee Tech up 11 to 3 in this one. Goes to the outside to Wellage. Braun at the top of the key. Braun working his way around. Passes back out to Wellage. Working. Wellage to the inside. Gives it to Holden. And it looks like there's going to be a foul on the play by number 14, Madamu Diara. And we're going to have a timeout here, so we're going to take a timeout with them. 11-3, to Tennessee Tech up in this one. Make sure you keep it locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM. Back here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center for Wright State Men's Basketball. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Tennessee Tech up in this one, 11-5. As A.J. Braun just made a quick to the basket play, he's got another free throw here. We'll see if he's able to get it for a three-point play for Wright State. And it looks like right now, Wright State's going to need it. Kenny White Jr. already scoring five points for the Golden Eagles. He had that nice th wide-open three on the outside. Braun not able to convert on that free throw. So Wright State so far one for three on free throw attempts. Not what you like to see for Wright State, a team who normally shoots above 80s for free throws. Struggling a little bit this one to find their rhythm. Ramsey kicks it out. Good passing by Tennessee Tech. Back out to Ramsey. Left wing. He's working his way to the inside, guarded by Braun. Braun, great defense. And now that rebound is going to go to Tanner Holden. Great defense from Braun, not allowing a wide open shot. Going back to the inside here for Braun. AJ Braun getting a lot of action so far. That layup is no good. Rebound going to number 14, Manamadu Diara. 
Pass to the outside to Kenny White. Kenny White back to the top of the key. Good passing by Tennessee Tech. Wide open shot for Tennessee Tech. That one's no good from John Petaway. Those wide open threes are where Wright State is really struggling on defense. They love to try to double team, but if that double team fails and the ball gets to a player, generally it's a wide open three. That's what really hit them hard against Akron, and it's gonna really hit them hard against Tennessee Tech unless they're able to fix it. Unless they're able to fix it up. Tanner Holden was fouled on the play. I believe it's going to be three free throw attempts. I believe he was fouled right outside the arc. But those wide open threes are coming from the same spot on the court. So you already know Scott Nagy is going to be on his players about that spot. Yeah, and, and that double team for Wright State, they really like to do it inside on the paint, but they've also started to do it a little bit on the outside to the key. Mm -hmm. So if they do it on the outside and they're able to find that wide open three player, Scott Nagy's going to be on his defenders. Because that defense is something that he's really tried to hit on this year because it's something that they've really struggled with. As a team. AJ Braun taking a little bit of a breather here on the bench now. Tanner Holden's first free throw attempt was good, and his second is good as well. Trey Calvin's going to be subbing in now for Wright State. Tanner Holden's going to sub out. So on the court, we got Andrew Wellage, Trey Calvin, Tim Finke, number four, Keaton Norris, and Grant Basili. Junior Clay working his way to the inside. Passes out. Started by Calvin, Junior Clay, pump fake, back to the top of the key. Here comes a shot that is no good, rebounded by Andrew Wellage. That shot coming from number two, Daniel Ramsey, no good. Norris, out to Wellage, back to Norris. Trey Calvin to the right side of the arc here. Back up to Norris, good passing on the arc from right state. Tim Finke looking around, taking a shot. That one's no good by Finke. Kenny White, here comes a three, and that one is good. Assist coming from Kenny White. That shot made by number 33, Shandon Goldman. Here comes another three. That one's no good by Andrew Wellage. Tennessee Tech, 14 to seven right now. Head away, passes Another out. wide open three in the exact same spot, and they're gonna find it. Kenny White Jr. now has two threes in that same spot, and that's gonna be a timeout right state. Scott Nagy's really going to have to talk to his players about perimeter defense, especially in the on the right side of it. Especially, that was a really nice play, especially from Tennessee Tech, because they passed it to Goldman again. Generally, Goldman would like to take that shot. He's on fire. He just made another three, but he sees his wide open teammate on the corner. It's a 2v1 play. He gets an even wider open three for his teammate, and it's made beautifully. I mean, Tennessee Tech, 17 points so far. They've played tremendous. I mean, Rice State not being able to answer so much on defense. They had a decent start, but... Uh, too much uh, inside defense, not enough on the perimeter, and that's going to lead to wide open shots. And we've seen it three times here right in front of us. Yeah, a lot of compliments has to go to Kenny White Jr. Normally a player who doesn't really lead Tennessee Tech in points, but he's the only one that's made more than one basket so far. You've got two points, two points, two points, three points from Goldman, making that three-point shot from earlier, but eight points so far from Kenny White Jr. Just absolutely dominating this right state defense, able to find so much space to make the points that he needs to make. Rice State down by 10. They have the ball. Trey Calvin gives it off to Wellage. It's going back up to Tanner Holden. Gets a screen from Vasily. But Holden working his way inside, and that layup's good. A really nice drive from Tanner Holden. That's his signature style. You love to see him make runs through the defense like that and get it to the basket. Sometimes he's even able to draw a foul there. Double team here. Go, pass going to the inside, and he's going to be number 12. And Mondu Sill is going to be fouled by number zero, double zero, Grant Vasily. So we're going to see number 12, Amadou Silla, come to the line for two. We'll see if uh, some of the talk that Nagy has given his players has been working so far. As there wasn't any wide open threes in this drive, but it could happen in the future. We've definitely seen it a lot so far, and we're only eight minutes into this game. First free throw attempt is no good by Silla. James Manns coming into the game. To an ovation from the yeah. crowd. I love James Manns. It's good to see him come in. They're happy to see Manns play. Second free throw attempt coming from Madu Silla. That free throw attempt is no good as well. 0 for 2 on that drive. Tim Finke with the rebound. Tim Finke hands it off to Calvin. James Manns throwing the screen. Trey Calvin goes to the top of the key. Tanner Holden passes out to Basili. Basili 
over to Holden. Tim Finke wide open on the inside. Good pump fake by Tim Finke, and he's able to get a nice lay up. What a move from Tim Finke. He knows the defender is going to overcommit to that, and he just sees it beautifully. Junior Clay guarded by Calvin. Rice State starting to heat up a little bit here. Junior Clay shot. That one is short, and that's going to be a foul on number 12, Madu Silla. That's going to be an over-the-back foul. Tennessee Tech so far with five team fouls. Rice State only with one. So Rice State's been doing pretty good with how clean a basketball they've been playing. It's actually six team fouls now. So Rice State, we might see Rice State go to the bonus eventually here. Yeah, only one team foul so far for Rice State and six for Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech up six points, but those team fouls are going to start to add up, especially if somebody gets to five. And like you mentioned earlier, Rice State's free throw percentage is not too bad so far in the season. Trey Calvin with the ball now. Hands it off to Tim Finke. Passes out to Holden on the left side of the arc. Basili out to Calvin on the right side. Calvin looking around. Passes back inside to Basili. Grant Basili working his way to the inside. And that layup is good. Grant Basili just biting his way against Amadu Sila. Those are the kind of points that Basili loves, where he can get one-on-one -on -one with the other center and beat him to the basket every time. He loves those points. Grant Basili with a blocked pass there, tip pass. Keyshawn Davidson goes back out to Junior Clay. Junior Clay's making some calls here. Rice State crowd getting a little loud here. And Junior Clay kind of getting shoulder checked by Tanner Holden here. And that's going to lead to a foul. And we're going to have a timeout here in the Nutter Center. 17-13, Tennessee Tech up in this one, but Rice State's starting to heat up. Keep it locked in. We got a lot more basketball to play here in the Urban Center. You're listening to Rice State Basketball on WWSU 106.9 FM. Back here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center for Rice State Men's Basketball. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Tennessee Tech up in this one, 11-5. As A.J. Braun just made a quick to the basket play, he's got another free throw here. We'll see if he's able to get it for a three-point play for Wright State. And it looks like right now, Wright State's going to need it. Kenny White Jr. already scoring five points for the Golden Eagles. He had that nice th wide-open three on the outside. Braun not able to convert on that free throw. So Wright State so far one for three on free throw attempts. Not what you like to see for Wright State, a team who normally shoots above 80s for free throws. Struggling a little bit this one to find their rhythm. Ramsey kicks it out. Good passing by Tennessee Tech. Back out to Ramsey. Left wing. He's working his way to the inside, guarded by Braun. Braun, great defense. And now that rebound is going to go to Tanner Holden. Great defense from Braun, not allowing a wide open shot. Going back to the inside here for Braun. AJ Braun getting a lot of action so far. That layup is no good. Rebound going to number 14, Manamadu Diara. Pass to the outside to Kenny White. Kenny White back to the top of the key. Good passing by Tennessee Tech. Wide open shot for Tennessee Tech. That one's no good from John Petaway. Those wide open threes are where. Wright State is really struggling on defense. They love to try to double team, but if that double team fails and the ball gets to a player, generally it's a wide open three. That's what really hit them hard against Akron, and it's gonna really hit them hard against Tennessee Tech unless they're able to fix it. Up. Unless they're able to fix it up. Tanner Holden was fouled on the play. I believe it's gonna be three free throw attempts. I believe he was fouled right outside the arc. But those wide open threes are coming from the same spot on the court. So you already know Scott Nagy is going to be on his players about that spot. Yeah, and, and that double team for Wright State, they really like to do it inside on the paint, but they've also started to do it a little bit on the outside to the key. Mm -hmm. So if they do it on the outside and they're able to find that wide open three player, Scott Nagy is going to be on his defenders. Because that defense is something that he's really tried to hit on this year because it's something that they've really struggled with as a team. A.J. Braun taking a little bit of a breather here on the bench now. Tanner Holden's first free throw attempt was good, and his second is good as well. Trey Calvin's going to be subbing in now for Wright State. Tanner Holden's going to sub out. So on the court, we got Andrew Wellage, Trey Calvin, Tim Finke, number four, Keaton Norris, and Grant Basile. Junior Clay working his way to the inside. Passes out. Started by Calvin. Junior Clay, pump fake. Back to the top of the key. Here comes a shot that is no good. Rebounded by Andrew Wellage. That shot coming from number two, Daniel Ramsey. No good. Norris 
Out to Wellage. Back to Norris. Trey Calvin to the right side of the arc here. Back up to Norris. Good passing on the arc from Rice State. Tim Finke looking around. Taking a shot. That one's no good by Finke. Kenny White. Here comes a three, and that one is good. Assist coming from Kenny White. That shot made by number 33, Shandon Goldman. Here comes another three. That one's no good by Andrew Wellage. Tennessee Tech, 14 to seven right now. Petaway, passes Another out. wide open three in the exact same spot, and they're gonna find it. Kenny White Jr. now has two threes in that same spot, and that's gonna be a timeout right state. Scott Nagy's really going to have to talk to his players about perimeter defense, especially in the on the right side of it. Especially, that was a really nice play, especially from Tennessee Tech, because they passed it to Goldman again. Generally, Goldman would like to take that shot. He's on fire. He just made another three, but he sees his wide open teammate on the corner. It's a 2v1 play. He gets an even wider open three for his teammate, and it's made beautifully. I mean, Tennessee Tech, 17 points so far. They've played tremendous. I mean, Wright State not being able to answer so much on defense. They had a decent start, but... Uh, too much uh, inside defense, not enough on the perimeter, and that's going to lead to wide open shots. And we've seen it three times here right in front of us. Yeah, a lot of compliments has to go to Kenny White Jr. Normally a player who doesn't really lead Tennessee Tech in points, but he's the only one that's made more than one basket so far. You've got two points, two points, two points, three points from Goldman, making that three-point shot from earlier, but eight points so far from Kenny White Jr. Just absolutely dominating this right state defense, able to find so much space to make the points that he needs to make. Rice State down by 10. They have the ball. Trey Calvin gives it off to Wellage. It's going back up to Tanner Holden. Gets a screen from Vasily. But Holden working his way inside, and that layup's good. A really nice drive from Tanner Holden. That's his signature style. You love to see him make runs through the defense like that and get it to the basket. Sometimes he's even able to draw a foul there. Double team here. Go, pass going to the inside, and he's going to be number 12. And Mondu Sill is going to be fouled by number zero, double zero, Grant Vasily. So we're going to see number 12, Amadou Silla, come to the line for two. We'll see if uh, some of the talk that Nagy has given his players has been working so far. As there wasn't any wide open threes in this drive, but it could happen in the future. We've definitely seen that a lot so far, and we're only eight minutes into this game. First free throw attempt is no good by Silla. James Manns coming into the game. To an ovation from the yeah. crowd. I love James Manns. It's good to see him come in. They're happy to see Manns play. Second free throw attempt coming from Madu Silla. That free throw attempt is no good as well. 0 for 2 on that drive. Tim Finke with the rebound. Tim Finke hands it off to Calvin. James Manns throwing the screen. Trey Calvin goes to the top of the key. Tanner Holden passes out to Basili. Basili over to Holden. Tim Finke wide open on the inside. Good pump fake by Tim Finke, and he's able to get a nice layup. What a move from Tim Finke. He knows the defender's going to overcommit to that, and he just sees it beautifully. Junior Clay guarded by Calvin. Rice State starting to heat up a little bit here. Junior Clay shot. That one is short. And that's going to be a foul on number 12, Madu Silla. That's going to be an over-the-back foul. Tennessee Tech so far with five team fouls. Rice State only with one. So Rice State's been doing pretty good with how clean a basketball they've been playing. It's actually six team fouls now. So Rice State, we might see Rice State go to the bonus eventually here. Yeah, only one team foul so far for Rice State and six for Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech up six points, but those team fouls are going to start to add up, especially if somebody gets to five. And like you mentioned earlier, Rice State's free throw percentage is not too bad so far in the season. Trey Calvin with the ball now. Hands it off to Tim Finke. Passes out to Holden on the left side of the arc. Basili out to Calvin on the right side. Calvin looking around. Passes back inside to Basili. Grant Basili working his way to the inside. And that layup is good. Grant Basili is bodying his way against Amadu Sila. Those are the kind of points that Basili loves, where he can get one-on-one -on -one with the other center and beat him to the basket every time. He loves those points. Grant Basili with a blocked pass there, tip pass. Keyshawn Davidson goes back out to Junior Clay. Junior Clay's making some calls here. Rice State crowd getting a little loud here. And Junior Clay kind of getting shoulder checked by Tanner Holden here. And that's going to lead to a foul. And we're going to have a timeout here in the Nutter Center. 17-13, Tennessee Tech up in this one, but Rice State's starting to heat up. 
Keep it locked in. We got a lot more basketball to play here in the Urban Center. You're listening to Rice State Basketball on WWSU 106.9 FM. Back here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center where we have Tennessee Tech playing Rice State University. Tennessee Tech up 17-13. Rice State heating up just a tad. My name is Scotty Kramer and alongside with me Noah Kindig. Got about 11.34 left to go in this game. Tennessee Tech basketball here. Deontay Wood working his way to the inside. That shot's no good. Rebound going to James Mann's good defense by Grant Basile. Wright State on a five-point run. Let's see if they can make it more as Calvin looks to start this play. Passes out to Finke. We got James Manns. He's working his way to the inside. And James Mann. A Mann's. beautiful move from James Manns. You love to see it. James Manns or Grant Basile. He's playing just like him there on the inside. Right Great play. Wright State loves, especially on attack, to have two players in the center. It's something that they tried last year to a lot of success, and they're trying it now this year. And we're going to have a traveling violation by Tennessee Tech. A bit lucky there for Wright State, to be honest, because you had two players on the outside of the key in a 2v1 scenario again, so that could have been another wide-open three for Tennessee Tech. But that traveling violation saving them a little bit. Wright State definitely stepping it up here on defense. So far, about eight unanswered points here. Trey Calvin with the basketball. Tennessee Tech playing some full-court defense. Calvin beats two. Passes outside to Norris. James Manns now to the inside. He passes to Finke. Norris, Basile, Basile, and we're going to get a traveling violation by Grant Basile. He tried to pump fake. His body kind of went with him there on the arc. <laughs> yeah, I think Basile wanted to go for that three-point shot, but he left the ground a little bit, so. I think he was still trying to determine whether he wanted to pump fake or actually go for While it. While he was in the air. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee Tech passing the ball here, going to the inside to Daniel Wood, guarded by Manns. Wood working his way, losing the basketball, saves it. Trey Calvin trying to work for it. And that's going to be Rice State basketball. That's going to be out on number three, Keyshawn Davidson. You love to see this effort from Trey Calvin. That's the second ball already that he's won by going down and by working hard to get that ball. Trey Calvin, pretty short dude too. Uh, I mean, he has to put a lot of effort into that play. Keaton Norris with the basketball here. Getting double teamed, looking to pass. Gets it out to James Manns at the top of the key. Back out to Norris, Tim Finke, left side of the arc. Norris over to Calvin on the right State side. A lot of passing by Rice State. James Mann's good pass to the inside to Basile. This is where we're going to see Grant Basile go to the paint. Passes out for Norris. Here comes a three. Beautiful. That's good. Number four, Keaton Norris. Right State, State now has the lead. Right State, they'll take the lead for the first time in this game. Keaton Norris, a beautiful three-pointer for the freshman. That should give him some confidence. Great defense by Keaton Norris as well. Trey Calvin with the ball now. Trey Calvin gives it out to James Manns. James Manns ripping a three. That one's no good, but when you see James Manns shoot on the arc, most of the time you assume it's going to go in. An 11-point run so far for Wright State. A deep three for Tennessee Tech will go in. They'll take the lead back and stop that 11-point run for Wright State. They needed to do it bad. Wright State was gaining a lot of momentum. Keyshawn Davidson with that three. Tennessee Tech up 20-18. to 18. Trey Calvin working his way to the inside here. James Mann's breaking his way to the paint. Trey Calvin with a jumper. That one goes in. Good shot by Trey Calvin. Trey Calvin with his first points of the day here. Tied at 20. Good passing by Tennessee Tech. Here's Wood, guarded by Finke. Wood back to the outside. Here comes a three-pointer, and that is nothing but net for Manabu Diara. DR with his first points of the game comes on a three-pointer. Tim Finke with a wide open three oh. and a toilet bowled out. That is very tough. 99% of the time, Tim Finke will make that shot. That's the 1% that you'll rarely see. Rebound, and that one's good. Second back-to-back -back points here for Madabu's Diara. Is it just me, or did that last shot for Tim Finke, it looked like nobody in the arena knew he was there. Not, I didn't, not, I didn't not, even know he was there until he had the basketball. Not, not Tennessee Tech, not the spectators, nobody. A ball just went over there, and Finke was there. Yeah. Great vision as well. And Tim Finke causes a turnover as he tries to pass it to Basile. That was stolen by Daniel Ramsey. Manama Diara looks like he stepped out of bounds. 
We're going to have a timeout on the court. Tennessee Tech staying alive, going above Rice State, 25 to 20. Rice State is heating up. We'll see what happens. Make sure you keep it locked here on WWSU 106.9 FM for more Rice State men's basketball. Back here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center where we have Tennessee Tech University take on, taking on Rice State University. 25 to 20 in this one. Thank you so much, Nick, as he gives us our stat sheets here. And we're going to see Rice State basketball as Trey Calvin takes the inbound. Trey Calvin, very fast, gives it over to Braun. Braun passed oh, basically across the court. Trey Calvin with the three. 23-25. Rice State's only down by two now. Tennessee Tech trying a similar defensive strategy to Wright State. As another timeout will be called immediately. Yeah, that's kind of odd. I'm confused on why they did take the timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep it on here um, as we just came back from a commercial break. But 25-23, Wright State did have that very slow start, uh, allowing a lot of uh, three-point shots. Worked on the perimeter defense, looking a lot better now. Uh, Noah, you're throwing the color on this one. What have you noticed so far by Rice State that's really helped them get back in this game? I think that it's a bit of Tennessee Tech's defense struggling and Wright State's offense looking a bit better. Yeah. You saw a lot of points where in previous games, they're going up into the basket, into the paint, and looking for some turnaround quick jumper shots. Mm -hmm. A lot of times for Wright State in the games that they've lost, those shots haven't been falling, but today those shots have been. And that's been a big success for Wright State. But also, Tennessee Tech defense... Looking a little bit like Wright State defense just in that last play, they tried to double-team a player, which left a player on the opposite side on the key wide open for a three-point shot. And they left open a guy who's pretty good on the arc as well. Here comes a wide-open jumper that's no good by Daniel Ramsey. Now we got Trey Calvin with the ball here on the right side of the court. Wellage, Basili, Holden. Holden passes back to the top of the key to Braun. Andrew Wellage looking around. Gives it to Trey Calvin. Trey Calvin, nice fake. He's going to take a mid-range jumper. That one's no good, though. 25-23, Tennessee Tech up in this one. We're going to see Petaway with the shot. That one's no good. Tanner Holden with the rebound, trying to get those quick points. Really solid defense there from Tanner Holden, not giving a foul and not giving a free shot either. Definitely great defense by Holden. Grant Basile with a very tough shot. What a drive to the rim from Grant Basile. One-on-one -on -one with that center, he takes those every time. Great shot by Basile. He now has five. Pass to the outside to Petaway. Petaway guarded by Basili. This one's going to be Ramsey. Ramsey's working around. Fadeaway shot. That one's no good. Rebounded by Grant Basili. We're tied at 25. As Trey Calvin gives it back to Basili. Basili's ripping that three, and that is good. Grant Basili, you wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he is an amazing three point shooter. Every once in a while, when he's on that outer rim, he loves to take the three-point shot. His opponents never expect it, and there have been a couple games last year where, where he took three three-point shots in a game, made all of them. And that three-pointer by Shannon Goldman's no good. He had that one earlier. That one's no good. Grant Basile now has the basketball. Passes to the inside to Braun. Braun trying to work his way. Gets fouled by Goldman, so we're going to see A.J. Braun go to the line for two. Wright State starting to find their rhythm and starting to really try some interesting stuff. Graham Basile, like we said before, taking a three-point shot. He's the center. He's not the guy that normally takes three-pointers, but when he's out there, he loves to take them. I mean, we saw it last season. If you saw Graham Basile on the arc and he was wide open, he was pretty confident in himself. He'd shoot it, and a lot of times he'd make that three-pointer. There were a number of games. I think there was one against Cleveland State last year where he took three three-pointers and made all of them 100% exactly. from the three-point arc. So. He's a very confident shooter, both from inside the paint and from the arc. And when they had Loudon Love, Loudon Love was that big bruiser to the inside. We never saw Loudon Love take threes, but Grant Basile to be that big guy who's able to work in the paint, but also be able to make those threes. We're seeing like a little bit of a Giannis, right? And, and, <laughs> Working on his threes and being able to be that guy who's an all-around player, I guess. I, I think Wright State has really enjoyed those players the past couple seasons, where you have some players like Braun and Basile, where you put two centers in the same roster, where you have two guys that can work in the paint, and then if you need only one guy in the paint, sometimes Basile can make that rotation to the outside and take a three-point shot if he needs to. Exactly. Having those two big men's awesome, and Basile being able to work his way on the perimeter makes it even better. We're going to see A.J. Braun come out of the game. We're going to see Finky back in here. And here comes a floater that's no good from number 13, Kenny White Jr. of Tennessee Tech. Going to be out on Tennessee Tech. We're going to see Wright State basketball as well. The Wright State bench loving the play so far. They've been on their feet clapping for their teammates, playing good defense and good offense right now. 
Rice State's definitely stepped it up as now they have a four-point lead, 29-25. Tennessee Tech starting to apply a press. They don't want to let Rice State out of their half. Trey Calvin thought about taking the shot. He, he did, really though. thought about it. Norris now has the ball. Wellage at the top of the key. Wellage has been quiet so far. It's being a team, team player to the inside. Basili. And wow, that's a lot going on in that play. Looked like uh, Basili kind of put a shoulder into one of the Tennessee Tech players. As it was also blocked by number 14, Manabu Diara. It's going to be a turnover nonetheless. So it's going to be Tennessee Tech ball. Kind of shoulder checked him right in the face. <laughs> Looked like hockey for a little bit. Yeah, right. Junior Clay with the basketball here. To the top of the key. Good passing here by Tennessee Tech. Kenny White. White Jr. looking around, guarded by Wellage. Wellage with great defense. Kenny White able to get a tough shot to go in, though. Great defense by Andrew Wellage. Good defense by Wellage, but Kenny White's had a really nice night so far. Tim Finke passes over to Calvin. Andrew Wellage to the outside top of the key, and that's going to be a turnover as it was deflected. And looking to see what happened there. Looks like a foul from Trey Calvin, I'd assume. Yeah, I thought it was a foul on the right stage. Just didn't see. Yeah, Trey Calvin slowed down the run a little bit by Tennessee Tech. S slowed down the breakaway, but it looks like he lunged a little too far and got a foul. That's Trey Calvin's first foul on the game. This is the team's fourth. 444 left to go here in the first half. 29-27, Wright State's up in this one. Wellage playing defense on White Jr. White Jr. passed into the outside. Great defense by Wellage as he pokes it out. Trey Calvin, fast break opportunity, works his way to the inside, but that's no good. He gets his own rebound. And they're going to call that, they're going to call that a travel. I, it didn't look like that for me, but obviously I'm on the other side of the court. What was do you it, think? Was it a travel on Calvin? I believe so. Maybe. It's hard to tell from all the, it's, it's hard to tell from all the way over here. He got here the rebound, he like pump faked. And I guess the officials, when I thought he, he jumped a little bit. Yeah, maybe he left the ground a little bit. But it didn't look like, for me, from my perspective. It's, it's hard sure. to see. There are a couple of players blocking it. Exactly. But either way, it's going to be Tennessee Tech basketball. Rice State with a two-point lead here with 420 left to go. Goldman, guarded by Finke. Gives it over to Junior Clay. Junior Clay, top of the key, passes out. Looking to get it to Davidson here. As Davidson gets the basketball. Davidson passes to Goldman. Goldman guarded by Norris. We have a big size advantage here for Goldman, and he's able to tie up the game here at 29. I think that's a matchup that Goldman will be pretty happy to take. Yeah, he has probably about a whole foot on this guy, on Norris. Norris with the basketball, passes out to Calvin. Back over to Norris. Back out to Calvin. Back out to Norris. Back to Calvin. Calvin really wants Back this. Back to Norris. Calvin really wants this three-pointer. He's not going to get it, though. Tim Finke passes to the inside. Calvin got the basketball. Now we're going to see Grant Basile for another three that is going to be no good. But it's going to be called out of bounds on Rice State. Timeout on the floor with 326 left to go. We're tied at 29 as Rice State's made a good comeback here in the second part of the first half. Make sure you Keep it locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM for more first half action here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center. We'll be back. For Irvin J. Nutter Center, we're tied at 29. Rice State University taking on Tennessee Tech here at home. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Great first half. Great first half so far. A tied game. Looked like it was going to be a bit rough for Wright State. Uh, the I think they were up 3-11, to 11, Tennessee Tech was. Yeah. But Wright State, they've recovered a little bit, and they're looking good. Definitely looking a lot better. Goldman has the basketball here for Tennessee Tech. There's the Petaway. Give it over to Diara. Diara, nice spin move on Basili. Here comes a fadeaway from Diara, but that's no good. And Norris is fouled on the rebound. That's going to be an over-the-back foul on number 33, Shannon Goldman. Norris winning that rebound over Goldman, a player who looks like it has a foot on him. Great, yeah. e great effort play from Norris. Norris is starting to remind me a little bit of Cole Gentry with how aggressive he is on all of these plays. It's something Scott Nagy is definitely ha happy to see as we're seeing uh, Norris get a lot of playing time this year. Yeah. 
Look, looking at the points rundown, it's Kenny White Jr. for Tennessee Tech, keeping him in the game with 10, their next scoring player. Shandon Goldman only with five for Wright State. You've got eight from Brasilli. You've got six from Holden. You've got five from Calvin. Uh, and you've got three from A.J. Braun so far. So Wright State sharing the scoring a little bit more uh, as, as they'll the take the lead. Throw. Yeah, as they'll take the lead with 30. But that's what we see a lot from Wright State is we don't really see one player that drops 30 points too much unless it's like Holden or Basile. A lot of times it's very diverse scoring. That, that's what you want to see as Wright State because they have a lot of players that can score. If you have one player scoring 30 for Wright State, sometimes it's not that good because I'd rather have two players score 20 than one score 30. Definitely. Bet away. We're going to wait to the inside. James Mann's on defense. Passes out here. Here comes a shot that is going to luckily fall in for number 14, Manamadou Diara, as they take the one-point lead here. And we're going to see a stoppage of play here. Looks like some kind of foul off of Tennessee Tech. We're going to see Tim Finke throw it in here. Uh, not sure if there's some issue with the shot clock or what. But anyways, basketball back here. Norris passes out to Calvin, back out to Norris. James Mann stopped the key out to Trey Calvin. Trey Calvin passes the inside to Basile. Great pass out to Norris. Trey Calvin, top of the key. Back out to Norris. James Mann's, James Mann's for a three. Little too far. And that basketball is going to go out of bounds. So we're going to see Tennessee Tech take over with 2.13 left to go. Right State with some quick passing. It's something that they tried a lot earlier in the year, but didn't really find success. This game, they're finding success, success with quick passes, and they're starting to lose their defenders a little bit. You're starting to see Tennessee Tech chase the ball and lose their marks just a little bit, a little bit more, and Right State will have some open shots. Shannon Goldman's going to be throwing it in here for Tennessee Tech. 2.13 left to go as Tennessee Tech has a one-point lead. Keyshawn Davidson brings it up the court. Trey Calvin guarding him. Back out to Goldman. Junior Clay. Junior Clay working his way to the inside. Passes to the top of the key to Davidson. Davidson with a floater. That one's no good. Rebound going over to Grant Basile. Basile out to Calvin on the right side. Passes to the right side of the key for Finke. Basile on the inside. That's no good. Right State hitting a little bit of a cold spot here. Good pass. Great passing by Tennessee Tech. Top of the key, Goldman wide open three. That one's off the rim. Davidson now has a wide open three. That one's no good as well. Two wide open shots for Tennessee Tech. Not able to fall. This is a, still a one point lead for Tennessee Tech. First rebound fell pretty lucky for Tennessee Tech. You're really gonna want that second three to fall if you're Tennessee. They got lucky on it, but it's not gonna happen twice. Trey Calvin with the basketball here. 115 left to go here in the first half. Over to Norris. Good pass to the inside from Norris over to Basile. Basile double teamed. And that's going to be a turnover to Davidson. And that's going to be a foul on James Manns. Manns a bit frustrated with himself for that one. He tried to turn and run with his mark, but just bumped him in the shoulder. Foul for Manns. He's a bit frustrated with himself for that one. Now we're going to see James Manns hit the bench here with 106 left to go. We're going to see Andrew Welch step back into the game. Kenny White Jr. going to be tossing it in here for Tennessee Tech. Passes into Davidson. Davidson. One minute left to go here in the half. And there's Junior Clay on the layup, and that's a good shot. Tennessee Tech with a three-point lead now. Here comes Norris. 45 seconds left to go. Norris. Passes to the top of the key to Finke. Finke back to the right side to Calvin. Back out to Norris. Norris, good pass to Basile. Basile working his way to the inside. In and out. Unlucky. We've seen a lot of unlucky shots here from the rim for Wright State. Saw the toilet bowl shot with Finke, and now that with Grant Basile. Tennessee Tech taking their time. They want this to be the last play. Want to go into the ha halftime with the lead here as they're up by three. Tennessee Tech has possession as Keyshawn Davidson looks to make a play. Keyshawn Davidson passes out. Junior Clay tries to get the shot to go, but that's a shot clock violation. Wright State, they'll play some really nice defense there. Tennessee Tech tried to make this the last play of the half, but two seconds left for Wright State. Let's see if they can make something happen here. We'll see if we can see some a crazy three-pointer to tie the game here. 
Definitely seen a lot of crazy stuff happen here in the Nerf Center like, before. Seems like Rice State has some kind of play going. It'll go to Basili. Well edged with the layup for the buzzer beater. What a smart play by Grant Basili and Wellage. It looked like that was something they tried in practice, which yeah. is a very weird spot to have a play ready for. But Wright State, they were ready for it, and it pays off. Two points for Wright State. When I saw that pass from Basili go to the inside, I'm like, well, they're not going to have enough time here. Gets it off with 0.2 seconds left. Easy layup. Andrew Wellage able to get some points on the board. That's his first points of the half. And what a time to come in and score. One point lead for Tennessee Tech as we go into the half. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Here about 10 minutes or so, we're going to have a halftime report, and then we'll be right back for a second half action. Make sure you keep it locked in here for Wright State Men's Basketball here in the Urban Jaden Nutter Center on WWSU 106.9 FM. Back here live as we got a lot of fun action here during the halftime. A lot of good halftime shows here. We got a bunch of kids playing knockout and a bunch of other stuff. But we actually have a basketball game here. 23, or th excuse me, 32-33. Rice State's down by one point to Tennessee Tech University. My name's Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kindig. Great game so far. Rice State had a little bit of a slow start. Definitely stepped it up. Made it a ball game. Grant Basili over to Andrew Welch for that nice layup. For the buzzer beater going into the half, what are your thoughts so far, Noah? Both teams having a pretty good day so far, I think. 32-33 is a pretty good scoreline at halftime, but both teams struggling a little bit at different points in the half uh, is what allows not a big lead from both these teams. So uh, in this second half, it's hard to predict who's going to come out on top in this game. As of right now in the second half, it, it, it's hard for me to put one team over another as it seems like both teams are having pretty good days i would say uh, this is the most eve like even matchup going to the half that we've seen all season i think so especially when you look at things like shooting percentage where tennessee tech shooting 43.8 percent right state shooting 44.4 exactly. both teams are shooting very evenly and both teams are having some errors on defense that are killing them a little bit especially with wide open three-pointers for both teams right state giving a couple more wide open three-pointers that tennessee tech wasn't able to capitalize on so maybe if the golden eagles are able to capitalize on those three-pointers in the second half if right state still gives them that is I think that's their win condition, where Wright State eliminating some of those defensive struggles will be what allows them their win condition for the second half. I mean, in my opinion, the way Wright State's going to win this one, uh, coming in, out, coming out of the second half or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, um, Wright State able to give that perimeter defense. Um, that's going to be a must. Continue that. They definitely stepped it up in the second half of the first half. Um, but Rice State able to capitalize on that and work more in the paint. They've been doing great. They've, we've seen a lot of success, but a lot of the shots that haven't gone in and thrown down the field goal percentage looked like they could have gone in. We had the wide open shot from Tim Finke on the arc that just totally bowled out. We've seen a lot of great shots taken, but they just haven't fallen. So Rice State's been very smart with their shot attempts. It's just some of them have not fallen. I think Rice State have to go back to giving that ball to Tanner Holden, giving the ball to Grant Basile, your players in the paint that really have a lot of success. Finding su success in the paint, and then, like you said, bunkering down and playing good defense is what's going to win them the game. They're going to get some points, I think, no matter what happens, but they have to play good defense, especially against Tennessee Tech, where they're giving these wide open threes. We're going to see both teams step back on the court here. we got about four and a half minutes left to go. We're going to see them warming back up. But like I said earlier, 33-32, Tennessee Tech up in this one. Probably the most even matchup we've seen going into the half all season long. Uh, let's go, go ahead and give you guys some stats from individual players here. Looking at Tennessee Tech first, uh, points scored lead, led by number 13, Kenny White Jr. He's four for five on his field goal percentage. Perfect from the arc as he's two for two. Leading the team in rebounds is Dan... Is it uh, D Daniel Ramsey, excuse me, as he has four, but he's 0 for 6 on the line. As you mentioned earlier, both teams are shooting about 43, 44% on the day. Let's look at Wright State, that side of things. Wright State very even in their scoring. Grand Basile leading the team right now with eight points. We also see Tanner Holden with six. Uh, Grand Basile is three for eight. Uh, Tim Finke, one for four. Uh, should be two for four. Honestly, that three-pointer with the toilet bowl, that was kind of crappy. Uh, but... Very diverse scoring here for Wright State. Trey Calvin has five. Um, and uh, Braun has three points. He had that two-pointer, and he had the and one. He converted on the and one. Andrew Welch scored before the half on that buzzer beater. Um, Ke Keaton Norris, he has four points as well. And he's, like I said earlier, reminds me a lot of Cole Gentry. 
I don't know if I said that live or said that during the commercial break, but he's a very aggressive player and pretty good on defense. I mean, he's taking on Goldman, who's like a whole foot taller on him, and we've seen him get a couple of rebounds in this one. Played really good basketball. We've seen everyone play very well. James Manns, we've seen him play. Uh, he's had some minutes as we haven't seen him play much at all in the past couple of seasons. Finally, he's getting some playing time. He's 0 for 2 on the arc, but either way, he's getting some shots in. And Rice State looking a lot better at the end of that first half rather than the beginning of it. I think for both these teams, what you want coming into the second half is for your star players, your guys that you're used to scoring, to score a little bit more. Uh, for Tennessee Tech, seeing White Jr. score 10 is not normal for the team. And I'm, I'm sure they're not complaining having 10 points, but I'm sure the players that they're used to scoring 13 a game, scoring 13 a night, they've got two players averaging 13 a night. Uh, being Kayshawn Davidson and Junior Clay, they're struggling a little bit today. I think they'd hope to see those players score a little bit more in the second half in order to take away this win. And for Wright State, I think they'd hope to see probably Finky put in a couple more. One for four is pretty bad considering his average. And also looking at Basili being three, being three for eight. Holden looks good. Holden looks really nice right now. Uh, he's only taken two shots, but he's made both of them. So Holden looks really nice. Uh, but you probably want Basili to have a bit of a higher shooting percentage and the same from Finky if you want to win this game for Wright State. We've seen Tanner Holden play more of a, like a facilitator role in this game, able to just kind of get the ball out, try to find the wide open man. Uh, great passing by Wright State so far in this game, though. I will say that they've done a great job finding the wide open man to at least make the attempt on a lot of wide open shots. Uh, of course, we've seen a lot of these wide open shots not go in. As I mentioned earlier, Tim Finky with that outside three. We didn't even know he was over there. Nobody did, and he missed that one. But Wright State's been great with passing. Um, if they continue that in the second half, they should be able to pull this one out as long as they're able to get the shots to fall. But uh, one player I did forget to mention was Manabu Diara. So far, prob he may not be the leading scorer for Tennessee Tech right now, but he's probably their best player at the moment. He has three rebounds and seven points, uh, two of them being defensive rebounds. I've said his name a lot. He's been all around the court, and he's going to be a player to look into going into the second half of this game. I think so. Diara is probably going to be a player that scores off against Basili for most of the second half, so that matchup is going to be important. If Basili is able to dominate it on offense, that's where Wright State wins. But if Diara is able to get some rebounds on Basili, maybe even get some points on uh, Tennessee Tech's attack side of the court, that's where that matchup is going to be won from. All right, 33-32. we got about 40 seconds till the second half starts, so we're going to take a very, very quick commercial break. When we come back, second half action here in the Urban J. Nutter Center. Keep it locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM. Dayton's right choice. Second half action live here from the Irvin J. Nutter Center. 33-32, Tennessee Tech up in this one. They just turned the ball over, so it's Rice State basketball. My name's Scotty Kramer alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Rusty Grant Basile with the ball here. Gives it to Tanner Holden, top of the key. Tanner Holden with a very easy shot, and that's going to be goaltending by number 33, uh, Shandon Goldman. So the points are going to be awarded to Tanner Holden. As that was a great play by him as well. Very controlled, very easy layup. Would have gone in if it wasn't goaltending. Looks like a really tough layup, actually. You had two defenders standing right there, but Tanner Holden found his lane, was able to go straight through. As a traveling violation for Tennessee Tech, will make it right state basketball again. They're already up by one. Let's see if they can make it more. We've seen three mistakes here, two on the offensive drive and one on the defensive for Tennessee Tech. So right state now has a one-point lead, and they have the possession here to start the second half. Trey Calvin gives it over to Grant Basile. See Braun. Braun passes inside. Tanner Holden with the authority over Deontay Wood. T Tanner Holden now with 10 points. He's starting off the half hot. Tanner Holden finds a great path, able to dunk just right by the defense. I thought both teams were going to start the second half really fast after a halftime where both teams relatively even, but right now it just seems like Wright State having all the success as another miss from Tennessee Tech. That miss coming from number two, Daniel Ramsey. But it looks like it's going to say stay as Tennessee Tech ball. I believe that was poked out of bounds by number 12, Amadu Sila. We're going to see number three, Keyshawn Davidson. With the layup, that one's no good. It's going to be out of bounds. I believe it's going to be out of bounds on Tennessee Tech. Daniel Ramsey. Rice State basketball, 36-33. Rice State up in this one. 
Davidson, a player who averages 12 for Tennessee Tech, only with three so far, really struggling to put in some points. Tanner Golden Holt. Eagles. Tanner Holt on top of the key, passes out to Trey Calvin on the left side of the court here. Calvin out to Finke, back to the inside to Holden. Tanner Holden, mid-range jumper. That one's no good. Tanner Holden's starting to cool down a little bit here. Here comes a shot that's going to be end up being a pass here. Good decision. Great defensive effort play from Tanner Holden. He gives his teammates time to get back, and they're not giving open a wide open three. And that's going to be a jump ball. Great job by Trey Calvin as Junior Clay tried to put a spin move on Trey Calvin, able to get a hand on the ball, and that's going to be Wright State basketball. How did Clay get that shot in? Did you see that? Yeah, I did see it. That was a very weird play all around, but great job nonetheless. Tanner Holden a bit open here, the side. The silly passes out to Holden, and Holden's going to be fouled on the shot by Daniel Ramsey. Now we're going to see Tanner Holden go to the line for two. Tennessee Tech really starting to crowd in the paint and trying to get in the way of Tanner Holden, but they're just going to give up fouls if they do that. This is Tennessee Tech's first foul of the half. Tanner Holden shooting two on the line here for Wright State. Tanner Holden, 10 points on the night so far. Let's make that 11 as that first free throw attempt is good. Now we do Diara subbing in for number two, Daniel Ramsey, here for Tennessee Tech. Tanner Holden. Two for two on that drive. That makes it 39-33 here for Wright State over Tennessee Tech. That was 39. Goldman out to Davidson. Davidson over to Jun Junior. Junior with the shot. That one does not fall in as Junior Clay's no good. Both teams trying really hard to get these rebounds. You saw three players at the rim trying to get the, that rebound, but it was two for Wright State, so they'll get that defensive rebound. A.J. Braun, that's going to be a turnover going to Goldman. Nice defensive play from Tennessee Tech. Goldman gives out to Clay. Good passing here by Tennessee Tech. Madama Junior Clay with the three. That shot looked pretty good, but that's no good. And Tennessee Tech has not made a shot since the second half started. They're very cold. Tanner holding out to Basili. Basili working his way to the inside. What a pass. Offensive foul, but man, did you see that feed from Basili? Right State starting to get a little bit fancy. Starting to feel it. Some very creative plays coming out from Wright State. Andrew Wellage subbing in for number 12, A.J. Braun. Manabu Diara. Passes in to Davidson here. Davidson guarded by Holden at the top of the key. Yara working his way to the inside, and looks like that's going to be a defensive foul on Rice State number 22, Andrew Wellage. It's Rice State's second foul of the half. Didn't have many at all in the first half. I believe they had about five or six, starting off with two here in the second half of play. Passing the inside to Goldman. Goldman, great pass, and that's going to be an easy slam in for Kenny White Jr. for Tennessee Tech's first point of the second half. That pass able to just slip through the defense. Nobody in the paint guarding that basket. What a bullet pass from Trey Calvin to Tanner Holden. Tennessee Tech starting to put on the pressure, so these passes have got to be bullets. And weird pass goes out to Basili, but Basili passes back out to Holden. Holden gives it to Basili. Bill it Basili for that three. And that one's an air ball, unfortunately. It's going to be Basili Tennessee Tech ball. Basili probably thought he had a bit more time, but Tennessee Tech able to get on him too quickly, so he has to put that ball really high in the air. Great defense by Tennessee Tech. Kenny White Jr. working his way to the inside. A little bit of Euro step, and now that's another air ball. Won't go. Tim Finke on the rebound. Tim Finke passes to Holden. Holden, great pass to Basili, and Basili's going to be fouled on the play by John Petaway. These passes have got to be bullets from Wright State. Tennessee Tech, they really want to put on pressure. They're going for these offensive rebounds at the rim. They're never off of about three feet from the people that they're guarding. These passes have to be bullets. They have to be quick. And Wright State, they've got to get rid of the ball if they want to find offensive success like they have so far this half. I was about to say, we've seen that a lot so far in this half. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, more second half action from the Urban J. Nutter Center. You're listening to men's basketball here on WWSU 106.9 FM. 
Back here on the Irvin J. Nutter Center. 38-35, Rice State University taking on Tennessee Tech. My name's Sky Kramer alongside with me, Noah Kindig. We have a lot of good basketball in play for the rest of the game here. We've had a great first half. Rice State was down by one point. Now they're up by three. Tennessee Tech had three turnovers on two drives and one defensive drive. Um, Tennessee Tech having a very sloppy start to this half. Rice State's able to get some points on the board uh, to make up for their mistakes. And uh, Rice State able to start pulling through a little bit here. No, what are your thoughts so far? So far, it looks like Rice State's really starting to have some success this half. They're going to have, I think, two free throws from Graham Basile as well to bolster their lead a little bit. Tennessee Tech struggling on attack. Defense is decently solid from them. They're making a few errors that Rice State's able to capitalize on, especially in the paint. But so far, I, I think if you're Tennessee Tech, it's got to be offensive struggles that you're focusing on right now rather than your defense. Your defense is okay. But on offense, you've got to find a way to make shots fall, whether that's finding however you may, however you got those wide open three pointers in the first half or in this second half just getting the ball as close to the net as possible and just hoping that they'll fall. Grand Basile's first free throw attempt is up and good. 39-35. Basile. Second one's in as well. 5 point lead for Wright State here with 16 left to go. Kenny White Jr with the basketball. He's guarded by Finke. Passes out to Davidson. Good passing here, Goldman, back to Davidson. Diara. Going to the inside, and that shot is no good by number 50, John Petaway. He's been very quiet today. Andrew Wellage over to Holden. Tanner Holden passes out to Trey Calvin. Trey Calvin's ripping that three, and that one's no good. Rebound going to Keyshawn Davidson. And there goes an alley-oop that was almost successful. But as I jinxed it, John Petaway is on the board now for his first shot of the game. Nagy not happy with that one. You could see it there. He, after that first rebound, Tennessee Tech was able to get an offensive rebound and get to that. Nagy not happy with it. He wants his players there getting that rebound. Trey Calvin passes to the inside to Grant Basile. Grant Basile double teamed here looking to just get rid of the ball. Gets out to Trey Calvin somehow. Trey Calvin's looking around. Good pass. Grant Basile is going to be wide open on the arc. And that one's no good off the side of the rim. The double teams for Tennessee Tech working a little bit better this half, almost forcing some defensive errors from Wright State. It did force one earlier and almost forced the second one. Davidson guarded by Calvin. Bouncing outside, giving his teammates an opportunity to set a screen, make some plays. Diara. Diara's going to rip a three, and that is good. Basili jumped a little early for that one, overcommitted for it. Diara able to get a pretty open three and find it. Looks like Basili isn't the only center in this game that can shoot from the arc. Yeah, Diara. One player I was going to look into coming into this half, and now he has a three-pointer. Tanner Holden, he's double-teamed. Trey Calvin, he's looking around, gives it back to Holden. Tanner Holden's triple-teamed, looking to get rid of it. Trey Calvin with the fake. Calvin's looking to get rid of it, and that's going to be a turnover. Fast-break opportunity as Petaway, easy layup in. And now Tennessee Tech is taking the lead 42-40. to Looks like a five-point run so far. Or sorry, excuse me, seven-point seven run, excuse yeah. Excuse me, seven-point run so far for Tennessee Tech. That's what they needed. It, it's not that they're making these complicated three-point shots. The three-point shot from Diara was pretty lucky, but the other four points have been really close to the rim shots where they're getting the ball basically right under the rim and just forcing it in the net. We got a player down. I was wondering what the stoppage of play was. Trying to see the number on who it was. Looks like it's number 50, John Petaway. He might have rolled his ankle fall, falling off wrong when he, after that layup. Uh, John Petaway, he's had a nice start to this half. I hope he's okay and he's able to come back in. He's being assisted off the court. But John Petaway has helped Tennessee Tech come back and take a two-point lead here in the second half against Wright State. James Manns is back in the game. We're also going to see number four, um, Keaton Norris. Tanner Holden still in. A.J. Braun, Tim Finke. Norris passes out to Manns. Manns over to Finke. To the inside to Holden. Tanner Holden. That shot's no good. DR getting the rebound. Good passing here. Nice play by Tennessee Tech. Great ball movement. And that's going to be a nice shot for Kenny White Jr., the assist coming from Deontay Wood. This is the exact kind of play that Tennessee Tech needs. Look at how quickly they got up the court, maybe three seconds. 
They get the ball, they get up the court, they get a very easy layup, and then maybe two seconds for everybody to rush back and get on defense. And they're going to see, say, James Mann stepped out of bounds when he caught the basketball. So that's going to be a turnover for Wright State. So much of the basketball game is being played in Tennessee Tech's defensive half, but they're winning because they get a turnover. The ball's up the court in under three seconds. The back is the, sorry, they, they make an easy, easy layup, a ba basically an alley-oop for them. And then yeah. they're just right back on defense three seconds later. Wood, Diara, this is the Davidson on the right side. We're going to see Kenny White. Kenny White with the pass outside. Goldman with a three. That one's no good. He shot that one quick. He did not look comfortable at all. Keaton Norris passes out to Manns. James Manns is just ripping the three, and that one's good. That's exactly what James Manns can do for you. James Manns with the three. He now has five points so far on the night. Right State, it's their turn for a breakaway as James Manns gets a little bit open to Tennessee Tech. Defender loses Manns. He's able to get a quick three for a quick three points. Pass outside to Wood. Going back to the inside. Goldman is fouled on the shot. That's an and one opportunity for Tennessee Tech. Shannon Goldman. He now has seven points. Might see him get eight here. Tennessee Tech up 46-43 in this one. A.J. Braun is seven now. We're going to see Andrew Wellage come into the game here. Shannon Goldman for the extra point here on the free throw. And that one, lucky bounce, and that one goes in to give Tennessee Tech the four-point lead. Here comes Norris. Rice State looking to get a little bit of a spark here. Gives it to James Manns. Tanner Holden. And... It'll hit off a defender. It I was about to say, like. I'm trying to. I, I couldn't see. My perspective is a little uh, off here. It looks like he got double teamed. Yeah, he got double teamed in the corner. Was able to pass it off a defender. Norris gives it over to Mans. Mans over to Finky. Finky's been quiet. They pass it to the inside to Tanner Holden, and as I say it, Tim Finky gets an assist over to Tanner Holden. Tanner Holden now has 12 points on the night. Holden able to get 14, close to the bat. Holden able to get close to the basket and bounce it off the glass. He doesn't have to go over to the defender. He can just go around him there. Keyshawn Davidson, Garley, Rossi, Wood. Wood's got an easy layup as James Mann just kind of gives up on defense there. Gives up the outside, able to go around James Mann to get the easy layup. The James Mann is going to take another three-pointer. That one's no good. But man, every time I see James Manns try to rip a three, he looks so confident, I always feel like it's going to go in. Wright State also trying to get that offensive rebound there. There were two Wright State players, the one Tennessee Tech, but Wright State not able to get it. Deontay Wood passes out to Goldman. Goldman rips the three. That one's no good. And we're going to see a foul by Wright State. Tennessee Tech, they're starting to lose a little bit of what gave them success. They still have a four-point lead, but it was those really, really fast turnovers and those quick runs three seconds up the, up the court that was giving them the lead. Now they're able to try for those three-point shots, and while they're going for them, they're not falling. So maybe if you're Tennessee Tech, you have to try to get some of those runs like what Wood did earlier, where he's able to force his way and look for a layup. I mean, like you mentioned, it, the fast break opportunity points are, that's what Tennessee Tech has capitalized on here in the second half. Tennessee Tech only has a four-point lead, but it feels like they've been playing a lot better basketball than Rice State. Rice State's been able to make a few shots to stay in this one. Obviously, they had a great start to the first half, or second half, but they slowed down a lot. And that's one thing I feel like has really caused Rice State's record. They're two and seven now, I believe, right? Two and seven, three and seven. And it's just... Not this team isn't as consistent as they used to be, like like last year. And I'm not sure what it is. Uh, of course, you lost Loud and Love, and that's going to make a big mark. But you still have Tanner Holden, Grant Basile, etc. And this team hasn't been the most consistent this year, and we've definitely seen it in this game. They're still super talented and very smart, but we haven't seen them be extremely consistent. I think Nagy's trying to find that consistency through defense. I think that's what he's looking for. Is he wants a team that can bunker down and play defense, a bit like Tennessee Tech has played this game where you don't have to go for those flashy shots. Obviously, they're fun. They're good to see when you see somebody pull for a three-pointer and switch it through the net. It's nice. But if you're playing nice defense, if you get a quick ball, get a quick rundown, 
the court and just pass it in for an easy layup, that's still worth two points. And we saw Rice State step it up on defense a lot as at the very beginning of the first half, we saw right here right in front of us on the yard, wide open threes. They would double team the wrong person, leave the wrong person wide open, easy three for Tennessee Tech, and Tennessee Tech had a big lead. Uh, if they didn't do that, Rice State probably would have went into the half with about a six to eight point lead. But of course, uh, they did step it up on defense going into the end of the first half. But starting off the second half here, they played pretty well. But now they're starting to slip up a little bit. Tennessee Tech only has a four-point lead, but it feels like Tennessee Tech's dominating a little bit here in the second part of the second half. It does definitely feel like that. We'll see if Rice State can change the momentum to go a bit more their way after this timeout. But as of right now, Tennessee Tech, I think, holds the momentum in this game. Definitely. We're going to see both teams step back on the court here. 49-45. 11.22 left to go. My name is Sky Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kindig. We're having a good old time here. Hope everyone's enjoying their Christmas break as well. It's been pretty fun so far. It's been pretty nice. Got Christmas next week, man. Good chance to relax. Enjoy some time with family. Should be good. Don't have to worry about exams and everything. I know. Great. Feels good. Keaton Norris with the basketball here for A State. He's going to pass it to the inside to Tanner Holden, who's had a great second half. Tim Finke on the left Trey side. Trey Calvin's court. lost. They can't find him. They do get him. Trey Calvin with the teardrop. That's no good. Rebound going to Goldman. Trey Calvin looked really open there. That was scary for Tennessee Tech. If they would have been think, able to pass that out sooner, he would have been able to make a three. I think it was Goldman shifted a little too far inside, leaving Calvin really far open on the arc. But Goldman was able to get there just in time. Madusilla gives it over to White Jr. And that's an easy layup for Kenny White Jr. Now with 16 for Kenny White. Kenny White has been... Balling out. Norris out to Calvin. Calvin's on the arc. He's looking for something. He passes out to Finke. Grant Basili to the inside. Basili, nice layup as Rice State gets another score here. Their first score in about two or three minutes. So hopefully we'll see Rice State start to pick up the pace a little bit here as Tennessee Tech has a four-point lead. Davidson. Keyshawn Davidson guarded by Finke. Passes over to Goldman. Goldman's looking around. Goldman's working his way to the inside. And it looks like we're going to see a blocking foul from Rice State. Trey Calvin, that's his second foul on the day. It's going to be Rice State's fourth team foul here. So we're going to see Goldman throw it in, throwing the inbound. Or excuse me, Davidson. Here comes Wood, and that's blocked by Grant Basile. What a block from Basile. We've seen some amazing blocks from him so far this season, and that's a fairly good one as well. We're also going to see a defensive foul by Tennessee Tech. That was on number 13, Kenny White Jr. I believe it's his first game. The Falcons and Golden Eagles, number one, Deontay Wood. That's his second personal. He's actually called on Deontay Wood. So that's Deontay Wood's second foul. Norris looking at about it here. He gives it over to Basili. Basili crosses court with the pass over to Calvin. Finky over to Norris. Or Tanner Holden. Trey Calvin rips that three. That's yeah. nothing but neck. That's the first time in a little bit that when a player has the ball, Tennessee Tech has been about has been more than I'd say three or five feet away from that player. Trey Calvin sees the opportunity, fires a three. He's got it. Trey Calvin now has eight points so far on the night. He's been a great role player and great on the defensive end as well. It looks like it was just Calvin that stripped that ball. Exactly. As I mentioned, that's a good time for the <laughs> commentators, Jinx, right? Yeah. 51-50, Tennessee Tech's up in this one, as it is Tennessee Tech's ball. Just under 10 minutes left to go here in the second half of action. So we're going to see Tennessee Tech inbound it here. We might see a few more points from Calvin soon because it looks like Tennessee Tech has had a bit of trouble watching Calvin. He's gotten, he's lost his defender a couple times so far this half, and maybe he'll continue to do that. Vasily gets the rebound, gives it over to Norris. And Norris passes out to Calvin. He thought about it. Good passing here. Passes the inside to Finke, and that's a miscommunication as that could have been a wide-open shot. Gives back out to Calvin. Trey Calvin's looking to pass it. Gives it over to Finke. Norris. Norris back out to Finke. Good passing here by Rice State as it goes back to Calvin. Perimeter passing here for Rice State. Tanner Holden working his way in as he makes that shot. What a play by Tanner Holden to work his way in the paint and get an easy layup. 
16 points so far tonight. Holden hyping up the crowd as Wright State finds the lead once again. And now we're going to see a timeout by Tennessee Tech as Wright State takes the lead here with 8.40 left to go. We're going to take a commercial break with them. When we come back, more second half action of this terrific game. 52-51, Wright State up in this one. Make sure you keep it locked here on WWSU 106.9 FM for more men's basketball. Back here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center as Rice State University is taking on Tennessee Tech University as they lead by one point, 52-51. We've had a very tight game, very fun game here in the Irvin J. Nutter Center. 8.40 left to go. My name is Scott Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Noah, great half. Uh, first half, and so far, a great second half. We've seen Texas, or yeah, Texas Tech able to play great basketball here in the first half, or second half, and then Wright State able to step it up here in about the last three minutes of the second half as they score about seven points in three minutes. Uh, Tanner Holton has 16 points. Grant Basile has 12. Trey Calvin stepped it up a little bit, got that nice three. What have you liked so far from Wright State to able to get them the lead? I, I think so far for Wright State, it's, it's really been... I, I guess fixing kind of those defensive struggles that they've had a little bit. They, they, they still are making some defensive mistakes, but also just seeing drives from players like Tanner Holden have been able to keep them barely in the lead here in this half. So you love to see, I guess, those flashy plays like the drive that we just last had from Tanner Holden, but also seeing three-pointers from Trey Calvin, James Manns, and some other players that have had success. We're going to see John Petaway back in the game after having that ankle injury, so it's good to see him back in. See Davidson, Keyshawn Davidson working his magic, working his way in the paint. That shot's no good. Rebound, that one's no good as well. Daniel Ramsey's now 0 for 8 on the night. Nagy pushing his players up the court. Trey Calvin at the top of the key. Looking to make some plays here. Gives it over to North on the left side. Back out to Calvin. He gets a screen from Holden. Goes back to Holden at the top of the key. Tim Finke's going across the court here. Tanner Holden over to Norris. Norris gives it over to Holden. Holden's working his way back in. A lot of perimeter passing here by Rice Day as we see Tim Finke for the three. And that one's off the front of the rim. Tim Finke now, he's one for five. Tennessee Tech playing solid perimeter defense. Tim Finke, that's not the shot that he wants to take, but it's the shot that he has to take with the shot clock ticking down. And we get we see Norris taking then the rebound. Foul of some kind being called on Tennessee Tech. Not sure what. They're going to give uh, Tennessee Tech's coach a technical foul. For stepping out on the court? Yeah. Oh. I'm not sure if they were trying to call a timeout or what, but they couldn't call a timeout, obviously, since it was Rice State basketball after that. Yeah. But they were given a tech because the coaching staff uh, for Tennessee Tech stepped on the court. As we're going to see the officials talking to the head coach of Tennessee Tech. 52-51 in this game. Price stayed up. Trying to see, uh, I was hoping they'd post like a, like a replay up there so I could see what happened exactly, but. May, I don't know, John Pelfrey having some words with the referee, but he, he'll retreat, he'll go back to his players, use the timeout. They will be given that technical foul as both teams now have Excuse me, Rice Day has four, and Tennessee Tech now has five. The Rice State, uh, we've seen a lot of perimeter passing by them so far here in the second half, but they haven't really been able to get any open shots, any movement at all. They've just been passing until the shot clock by, you know, hits about three, and then they just try to take a three, and it doesn't work out. They're what do you think there's some things that they could do to be able to get a, a, a nice wide open shot or just some better ball movement to the inside? I, I think you have to force the Tennessee defense back a little bit, and to do that, I think you have to try to get Holden or some other player to make runs to the inside because if the players are encroaching a bit too much, on that arc, the way to get them to back off is by forcing them to back off, by making those runs to the inside. So I think if Holden or maybe some other players are maybe, maybe somebody like Calvin, Calvin's pretty good at making those runs to the inside. If you get a ball to a player that can make some runs to the inside back and forth and maybe make the Tennessee defense think that they have to back off a little bit, you might have a little bit more room for those three-point shots. But right now, Tennessee Tech is playing some really good perimeter defense. 
So I think if you're right state, that perimeter shot isn't going to be as likely to be open. It might be open. You got to work they, your way to the inside. You got to work your way to the inside. I, I think for right state, that perimeter shot might be open if Tennessee Tech makes an error. But you can't just be doing perimeter passes back and forth and expect to force your way through Tennessee Tech. Definitely. And uh, one thing that they're going to right state's really going to have to focus on is utilizing Tanner Holden and Grant Vasily within the paint because a lot of the points have come from the inside of the paint from both of them. Tanner Holden has 16 points. Grant Vasily has 12. And the technical foul from Tennessee Tech leads to Tanner Holden going to the free throw line. Yeah. After, and that after, first one's good. Well, was, was it Pelfrey, the head coach, that stepped out onto the court, or was it one of his assistants? Do you know? I believe it was Pelfrey. Okay. Not 100%, though, because I didn't see the replay. But Pelfrey was arguing with the ref, so it might have been him. Not sure. But. Second free throw attempt is good by Holden, so it's going to stay as right state possession, too, as they take a three-point lead. Yeah, I've, I think it's the first time I've seen that happen here in the Nutter Center from my experiences commentating. I don't really see that too often. I think coaches will step out in the court and referees don't like to call that, but I think why he was forced to call that play was because Wright State had a breakaway and they were running down the court really fast and he was still on the court. Pete Norris with the three-pointer. And now all of a sudden, Wright State had a one-point lead, but after that technical and a three, it's a five-point play for Wright State. And They're up all, six. That's all from the coaching staff, unfortunately. That's not even the players. You can't blame them for that. And that's going to be a foul. Looks like it's going to be called on Grant Basile. Shooting foul. Foul will be on Trey Calvin. I was about to say Trey Calvin. That's his third His third foul on the day. Nagy looking a little bit frustrated about these fouls. He, he Especially on defense, he doesn't like his players giving up those fouls. I, I think Nagy's a coach where so, some coaches, they like when their players will foul to basically say, you don't get these points at all. I'm going to foul you so you don't get these points. Yeah. Nagy's a coach that expects the other team to have a lot of trouble on defense if you're on top of them. So he wants his players close as possible, but not fouling. Grant Basile with great defense there. Gets a little bit of a tip. That ball does not go in, so it's going to be Rice State basketball. Trey Calvin passes the inside to Tanner Holden. Tanner Holden passes out to Finke. Tim Finke passes over to Trey Calvin. Calvin and Norris back out to Calvin. Calvin's ripping a three. That one's no good. Rebound going over to number 50, John Petaway. Holden almost had that rebound, but Tennessee Tech, they've got a run now. And Petaway loses the ball, but Wood able to tip it back in. Deontay Wood now three for seven. Or three for six, excuse me. Trey Calvin. Red Norris going to the inside. Grant Basile with the layup. And, and one. one. Opportunity for Grant Basile as he now has 14 points. Those are the exact plays that you want to see for Wright State because that was on the inside and it was in the paint. It's going to force Tennessee Tech to maybe put a second guy on him, which is going to give so much room to your perimeter players. And that's uh, pretty much what I envisioned them doing coming out of that timeout, was utilizing the paint, getting Grant Basile, Tanner Holden to go to the inside. And as you see, Grant Basile is able to get inside the paint and get the end one opportunity. Rice State up 59-53 in this one as we see Grant Basile at the free throw line. His free throw is no good. It's going to stay at a six-point lead for Rice State. 6.15 left to go. We're going to see Kenny White Jr. here. Get over to Diara. Get over to Kenny White. White's had a great game. He has 16 points. Looking to add on to it. We're going to see Petaway. Give it over to... Diara, Diara, that's no good. Rebound going to Tennessee Tech as they've had a lot of rebounds. But this one's going to go to back to Grant Basile as he's he's getting double teamed. Yeah, I was like, getting double teamed there as they're starting to play a little bit of full court defense. Not fully dedicating themselves to it. Trey Calvin gives it over to Finky. Finky's been quiet tonight. Gives it back over to Calvin. Trey Calvin. He gets fouled. Be fouled on the shot. I think that full court defense from Tennessee Tech isn't actually them trying to play full court defense. I think partially what it is is not allowing Wright State to get a breakaway point. Because there, if Grant Basile just throws the ball up the court, most likely a Wright State player can get on top of it and maybe even look for a basket. But if he but if he gets double teamed, he is able to get around them eventually, but it takes two or three seconds. And at that time, the other three Tennessee Tech defenders can be back and ready to go. Trey Calvin at the line. First one is good. He now has nine points. We're going to see Shannon Goldman sub back into the game as well as Junior Clay for Daniel Wood. And I'm trying to see who else was subbed out. And number three, Keyshawn Davidson. Calvin's second free throw attempt is good. He now has 
double figures here as we see three Raiders with 10 plus points. That's Calvin, exactly what Basile, you want to see. Holden. That's exactly what you want to see for Wright State. You want to see three or four players in double digits as Wright State now up by seven. Kenny White. Up by eight, excuse me. And Junior Dave, or excuse me, Junior Clay loses possession of it, but it's going to be out on Tim Fenke. So it's going to stay. It's Tennessee Tech ball here with 522 left to go. Junior Clay throws to the inside over to Kenny White. Junior Clay, good pass to the inside to Goldman, but Goldman loses it. Fast break opportunity here for the Raiders. Trey Calvin, a little bit of a bad pass to Tanner Holden, so that slows things down. But Tanner Holden's going to work his way to the inside. Finke passes. And Norris, Keaton Norris able to keep it for Rice State as he has a bad pass, but Trey Calvin's able to keep possession of it. Trey Calvin. A bit. Two or three scares in a row off Wright State passes, but Wright State able to keep it and Holden able to get an easy basket. A beautiful pass from Trey Calvin. Timeout called. Crowd on their feet here in the Nutter Center. 20 points for Tanner Holden. He has been the star of this game. Wright State now has a double digit lead, their first of this game. 63 53, just under five minutes left to go. We're going to take a quick commercial break when we come back. Last five minutes of action here from the Irvin J. Nutter Center on WWSU 106.9 FM. Welcome back here to the Irvin J. Nutter Center as Rice State University takes on Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. My name is Scotty Kramer alongside with me, Noah Kendig. 63 53, Rice State up by 10 points with five, under five minutes left to go here. The Raiders starting to take over this game. Definitely are. Tanner Holden with 20 points. Trey Calvin just hit 10. And Grant Basile has 14 as. Is that the, Norris? The ball goes that out is of Norris. Aggressive play. Norris not just going to let him get a pass for free. Going to knock it out of bounds. It is going to say Tennessee Tech possession, though. They're going to be a bit more careful, though, in the future around Norris. I see Kenny White. Kenny White passes the inside, and that's just like football. It's intercepted by Tanner Holden. Nagy puts his hands up on that. He loves it. You don't see Scott Nagy way too happy on the sidelines all the time during a game. But he's looking pretty happy right now. Rice State's being extremely smart with their plays. Trey Calvin passes over to Norris. Back to the inside. Tanner Holden passes out to Finke. Goes back to Norris at the top of the key. Finke, Holden. Holden cross the court pass. Trey Calvin for three, and that one's good. He's got it. 13 point lead here for Rice State. Here at the end of the second half, they're starting to pull away, and there goes a three. That's going to be no good Won't go. by Diara. Rice State's going to take things a little slow here. They got a big lead. Decent lead, I'll say. I won't say big. 13 point lead. Trey Calvin's working his way to the inside. Gives it over to Norris. Diara was able to get a hand on that pass from Tanner Holden, but it was just able to get to Calvin, and Calvin knocking down a three. Norris gives it over to Finke. Top of the key. Trey Calvin. It's a screen. Trey Calvin. Fadeaway shot, and that's good. Got it. Trey Calvin now has 15. Trey Calvin has had a killer second half. He's just got a three, and now he's got another two. That away. Guard by Finke. Trying to pull a crossover. Diara working his way to the inside. Pass back to Padaway. Here comes Kenny White. That three is good. Kenny White now has 19 points for Tennessee Tech. He's definitely been their player tonight. The Wright State with a 12-point lead with three minutes left to go. Tennessee Tech going to start playing a really, really aggressive defense. Tanner Holden not. As Trey Calvin wins the ball back. Not a turnover as Trey Calvin, great, great work to keep a, this offensive drive alive. Here comes a shot that is no good by Tim Finke. Trey Calvin making a bad pass look really good as he's able to get there. White Jr. as he gets inside the paint, 21 points for Kenny White as Tanner Holden was looking for a charge. Tanner Holden trying to bait a foul, not going to work. Yep. Finke over to Basile. Basile top of the key to Norris. Norris over to Tim Finke. Tim Finke looking to be more of a facilitator as it has not been his night in the field goal percentage here. Norris looking around here. Gives it over to Basile. Trey Calvin on the left side. Trey Calvin on the arc. Goes to the inside over to Basile. Basile's working his magic. Here comes Norris and that shot's blocked. Shot clock violation from the Raiders. Wright State still up 10. Two minutes left to play. 
Timeout on the court with 2.03 left to go. We're going to take a very quick commercial break. When we come back, last two minutes of action here from the Irvin J. Nutter Center. Keep your dial locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM, Dayton's right choice. Welcome back to the Irvin J. Nutter Center as the Wright State Raiders take on the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. My name is Scotty Kramer. Alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Noah, 10-point lead for Wright State. They've had a tremendous past, I'd say, uh, nine minutes or so in the second half. Wright State really starting to dominate the second half. They were up, I believe, 16 or 18 at one point, but now only up 10 with two minutes to play. Let's see if they can hold it out. Tennessee Tech going to start playing some really aggressive defense. Trey Calvin's had a tremendous second half. He now has 15 points. Tanner Holden has dropped 20. Grant Basile, he's been more quiet in the second half, but that's left for more options in the scoring range. We've seen Basile have that AM1 opportunity here in the second half. That's all we've really seen from him other than a few assists, but Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, they've really stolen the spotlight here in this show. Wright State, three players scoring 10 or more points. Tennessee Tech only with two. Kenny White Jr. scoring 21, though. See if it can keep them in the game. Kenny White Jr. is fouled on the play. Looks like it was, I believe it was on Grant Basile. Might have been Tanner Holden. It's on Trey Calvin again. Every time I say Grant Basile, it's on Trey Calvin. They're always in the same area, I swear. But Trey Calvin now has his third foul. Fourth foul. Got to be careful. Is it his fourth? Number four. Got to be careful. His fourth foul. And we're going to see Kenny White Jr. take two shots. He has 21 points. That first free throw attempt is no good. We're going to see John Petaway sub back into the game for number 33, Shannon Goldman. Free throw attempt is up and good by White Jr. He now has 22. Wright State only up by nine points now with 147 left to go. Full court defense on display here for Tennessee Tech. Tanner Holden gets it out to Norris. Norris passes up court to Finke. Tennessee Tech trying to triple team somebody. And there goes the turnover that they wanted. Tennessee Tech gets the ball. Junior Clay passes to the inside, deflected by Tim Finke. Tim Finke playing like a defensive back right there as that ball goes out of bounds. As soon as Keaton Norris gets the ball, as soon as it's inbound, he's triple teamed. He has to get rid of it as fast as he can. Tennessee Tech going to play some aggressive defense to try to make this work. Shannon Goldman and Kenny White Jr. coming back into the game for Tennessee Tech. Kenny White Jr. is going to get the ball. He's been their playmaker tonight as he gets a layup. And now Wright State only has a seven-point lead. Trey Calvin with the ball, passes up to Norris. Keaton Norris, Goldman's on him. Keaton Norris looks around, passes over to Calvin. Trey Calvin looking around. He's looking at Finke, he's trying to get it to Finke, but he's working his way to the inside. Passes out to Basile, back out to Trey Calvin. And Trey Calvin, looks like there's gonna be a blocking foul on Tennessee Tech. It's gonna be called on number 13, Kenny White Jr. That's his first foul on the day. And Wright State is in the bonus, so we're going to see Trey Calvin go to the line for two. Trey Calvin. That one's up and in. 69-61 here for the, the score. Wright State up by eight points. This is where free throws can really give you a buffer. Trey Calvin. Second one is in as well. Two free throws from Trey Calvin, making a nine-point lead. Trey Calvin now has 17 points on the night. Great night by Trey Calvin, Tanner Holden, and Grant Basile. Kenny White passes out to Diara. Diara passes inside for Keyshawn Davidson, and he makes the layup. Timeout, Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech now has one timeout remaining after this one. 54 seconds left to go. Wright stayed up by seven points. And I got to say, Tennessee Tech's full-court defense hasn't been bad. They had that one turnover on that first drive where they started doing the full-court defense, full-court press defense. What do you think Tennessee Tech has to do to be able to have a chance at this one? Rice State has looked tremendous so far in the second part of the second half. Anything Tennessee Tech can do to score seven points inside of the game with 54 seconds? I mean, it's definitely possible. We've seen crazier stuff happen here in the Nutter Center. I, I mean, the first thing my mind goes to is what they're already doing, full-court defense. If you're Nagy right now, he's in there drawing up his players a play on how to inbound the ball and get it down the court. Exactly. That's what he's doing. waste as much time as possible in this situation. Yes. With about a minute to go, if 
two full drives happen, that's a minute play, and Tennessee Tech, there's no way that they can make it in with a seven, with a seven point lead for Wright State. So if you're Wright State, you want to inbound the ball and waste as much time as possible and hold on to it. Make them foul you if anything. So we'll see if Tennessee Tech decides to play a full court defense or if as soon as Wright State gets the ball, Tennessee Tech decides to foul. We'll see what they decide to do here as Norris throws it into Basili. It'll be full court defense. And it looks like it's going to be called. Play is under There's review. Going be, play is going to be under review here to see who has possession. As Grant Basili lost the ball, but they're not sure if it was poked out or Grant Basili touched it last. Or if I believe, I think it's Deontay Wood on defense. He might have poked it out, but they're going to take a look at it. Don't want to miss anything here. One minute left, so we're going to keep it locked in here. But full court defense, I mean, they wasted about two seconds there. Wright State did. Uh, so now the play is going to be under review. But like I mentioned, Tennessee Tech University's uh, full court defense has been pretty solid. So far, yeah. Same thing as last time. It just gets inbound into the same side of the court. They get two or three guys on them, force it out of bounds. You, you force this full court defense is going to force them to do one of two things. Either just chuck the ball down the court and maybe a, a Tennessee Tech defender, tall guy, is able to get it or force the ball out of bounds and they win it that way. Either way, Rice State's got to find a, wider, a way to break it. Rice State's players are already back out on the court, but NC Tech's still in that little huddle. Officials are still reviewing the play. Still waiting on the official decision here. It looks like they're starting to wrap things up as Tennessee Tech's players are coming back out on the court. The official is still not sure which way it goes. Whichever way it is, it's going to be a close call. I mean, I couldn't even tell, and I had a pure shot of it. Right. So it's definitely going to be a tough decision, and looks like they're making the call now. And it's going to be Tennessee, Tennessee Tech, Tech basketball. basketball. Tennessee Tech down by 7, 51.5 seconds left to go. They're going to have to score quick and play some great defense. And right before the play starts, we're going to hear a blown whistle from the officials. Looks like Basili and somebody that he's guarding having some problems. Refs telling them to knock it off. Inbound goes into Junior Clay. Junior Clay passes over to Davidson. Davidson working his way at the top of the key. They don't have much time to spare. Junior Clay working his way inside. Charge. And that's going to be a charging foul by Junior Clay. Wright State basketball. Keaton Norris with a big play for Wright State. Able to bait the charge from Junior Clay. Junior Clay was going in like a rocket. He was going super quick. Great play by Norris to take the charge and cause the turnover for Tennessee Tech. Norris looking to inbound it here. Gets it inside to Tanner Holden. And Tanner Holden's going to be fouled by number 14, Manabu Diara. So we're going to see Tanner Holden go to the line for two free throw attempts. He already has 20 points on the night. Diara now has four fouls on the day, which at this point of the game doesn't really matter too much. Goldman's going to sub out. We're going to see number 50, John Petaway, come in for Tennessee Tech. Number two, Tanner Holden. Shoot. Tanner Holden at the free throw line. This first free throw attempt is up, and that one's good. 71-63, eight-point lead here for the Raiders. This is crunch time. This is where free throws matter. And Trey Calvin made his two, and it looks like Tanner Holden already made one, and maybe he'll make a second. Here comes Holden. Second free throw attempt. That one's good, good. as well. 22 points from Tanner Holden tonight. Free He's been a show. Free throws are that buffer. Tennessee Tech, they're trying to foul Wright State, but Wright State, they love free throws. Take it from a five-point lead to a nine-point lead. Junior Clay with a three. That one's no good. And Wright State being a little slow as Tennessee Tech gets that rebound. Petaway. Passes. Here comes a wide-open three from Davidson. Won't that go. one's no good. But still Tennessee Tech basketball. Here comes another three. That one's no good, but this one's rebounded by Grant Basile. And Wright State's able to run the clock out. 72-63, Wright State wins here at home. 
Great second half action by Rice State, able to pull away with about eight minutes left to go in the second half. Rice State 72, Tennessee Tech 63. What a great game. The Raiders still take this one by nine. Wasn't pretty. Had, had some rough spots, but the Raiders, they will take this win. Definitely. They made a lot of great improvements going in, coming back from the halftime. Second half action was tremendous by the Raiders. Started off a little bit slow, but from about the 11 minute mark since, looks pretty solid, I gotta say. You had some great plays. They were able to limit their turnovers. Their defense looked a lot better than it has in previous games. There's still some work to be done on their defense. They had some wide open threes, especially in the first half early, but for Wright State, you've gotta be happy with this win. Your defense made some improvements that you needed to make, and you came out on top. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, Raider post game show here from the Urban J. Nutter Center. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, at the halftime show, so make sure you keep it locked in here on WWSU 106.9 FM. Raider post game show here from the Urban J. Nutter Center. Wright State wins this one 72 63 over the Texas, Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. My name is Scotty Kramer alongside with me, Noah Kendig. Gotta say, a very fun game. Head, you know, neck to neck all the way through. Wright State started to pull off at the very end of the second half. Obviously, good to see a Raider home win as they are now. Uh, Four and seven on the season, if I'm not mistaken. Four and seven. Uh, three and seven. Three and seven, excuse me. But anyways, Rice State, great game by them over Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech falls to three and eight. But what a great game from Tanner Holden. He played tremendous. He was seven for nine. He was perfect from the free throw line. He had six rebounds, three assists, 22 points. He's definitely the player of the game. Tanner Holden, he's been the player to look for from Wright State all season. Excuse me. He's averaging 18, 19 points for them a game. 22 points, so I even up that a little bit for him. But the thing for Wright State that you love to see, what they've lacked so far is they've lacked a bit of backup for Tanner Holden and Graham Basile. Calvin, he's been a bit off. He's had some really nice games. The game against Purdue where he scored 21. Here, he scored 17, and that's what gets Wright State the win. Yeah, we saw players that we saw a lot last year play very well. It had been a little bit more quiet. Tim Finke, he was one for six tonight. He did have uh, three assists and three rebounds, and he had a steal. But he was more of a facilitator throughout this game, very quiet. Uh, we saw a bronze start in the game, Alex Braun, but he ended up not playing much in the second half of this one, which ended up being a good decision as Rice State started to pull out. He was one for three. He made that three-pointer. Um, like I mentioned, Tanner Holden was the player of the game. Trey Calvin, he had about eight points in the span of what? About five minutes or so? He about, had, yeah. So he, he was balling out. He played tremendous. Um, Norris as well. He only dropped seven points, but we saw a lot of great plays from him, great passes. Um, he only got one assist, three rebounds. I mean, he was going up against a guy like a foot taller than him as well. So great effort all around by this Wright State team. I really don't have too many critiques other than a little bit of the start of the game with the turnovers and the lack of perimeter defense. But they definitely made it all up in the second half as they win by nine points. Wright State, of course, had some problems. Um, you, you'd like to see Finky and maybe some other players like Braun score a bit more yeah. in the future. Maybe. But th those buckets will fall. They'll come with time. But you've really got to compliment a player like Keaton Norris, who had seven points for Wright State as a freshman. And while seven points doesn't look all that flashy, he did that. He shot three three-pointers this game, made two of them. 66% exactly. from the three-point line. 